to all our listeners, viewers, we are in the presence of the Lord, and let's stand and give God praise, glory, and honor. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tell somebody, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the highest praises. Unto the mighty God. Hallelujah. So we want to welcome you in the presence of God here. In the presence of God. And we know that the Lord has something in store for us. Something in store for you. Something in store for me. So Father, we come into your presence. We are so grateful that you are God. You are Lord, your creator, master, provider. You are the savior of mankind. You sent Jesus, hallelujah, who reached down to us. And we are privileged to be alive in the midst of this chaotic world. But God, we are grateful that you have set us, you have saved us. The word tells us that our days, they are numbered. And we are happy, oh God, that you have placed your hands of surrounding around our lives and we pray in Jesus name that you are going to minister to us as we minister to you Lord you have called us to praise you to honor you to bless your name so we come into your presence today we come into your presence we lift our hands in the sanctuary of the Lord we lift our voices and we declare you are Lord hallelujah we declare you are God. Oh Lord, we ask even now that you are going to visit. You are going to visit. You, you know all things. You are going to visit that loved one who is sick and need ministry. You are going to visit that one who is depressed and need a touch from you. You will visit that one who need, oh God, your intervention. They are worried. They're fearful, but we know that you are able, even if it's just one, oh God, even if it's just that individual, you will cause a testimony to be praised until we lift it up for your glory and for your honor. So we commit everything into your hands. We ask for your touch upon the worship leaders. We ask for those on the program and that you will have your way. Your anointing will speak this place. Your anointing will move and move. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' powerful and precious name. Amen and amen. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise. praise God. Praise God. The worship team is coming. To minister unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift up your name in praise, O oh God. We exalt and we adore you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, O oh Father God. We lift up the name of Jesus, for you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you in this place today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We exalt your mighty name. We glorify your mighty name. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise be to God. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. We come into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good and his mercies endureth forever. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. For all the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I give. 
give you the praise. Let's sing that again. It is coming from. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. I'm grateful for your love. I give you the praise. I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself.
enter into the presence of God. Let's ask him to purify our very souls. We're going to be like the children of Israel when they enter the tabernacle. They ensured that they were clean and purified in the presence of God. So God, we pray that you purify our very hearts, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Let us be like sweet incense, oh Lord, burning before you today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, purify my heart. Purify my heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, mighty God. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, refiner's fire. Lord, my heart's one desire is to be. Praise an altar, 
Lord, I long to see your face. Take me past the crowds of people and the priest who sings their praise. Lord, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. So take me to the holy of holies. Lord, take me
Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we praise your name, Lord. Oh, we praise your name, oh God. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here today. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory
Dieu. Oh God, we adore you. We are presence of all we need. Oh God, touch some life right now. Every single person in, the, in your presence here, oh God, visit us. Spirit of the Lord, you are faithful. Your word tells us, faithful is he who had called us and who will do it. Hallelujah. You're able to do your thing. You're able to minister. You're able to bring deliverance and victory. You're able to undertake. You're able to intervene. Oh God, we love you. We love you. We love you. wonderful name. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, brethren, I can guarantee you one, guarantee you one thing, that God is able to intervene in every affairs, all things. He's able to make things well. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and says, God is able. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we want to prepare our hearts to receive the reading of the word. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 17 to 32. Praise God. If you're in your home, we're just going to give you just about a few seconds to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 17 to 32. Our deacon, beloved deacon, Gregory Citram is coming. And he will read the word of God. God bless you, brother. Praise the Lord and a blessed good day to each and every one of you. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Ephesians, fourth chapter, and we'll read from Verse 17, and it says, So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You ought, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desire, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor for we are all members of one body in your anger do not sin do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold 
He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unhold come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. God bless his word to our hearts. Hallelujah. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me and need you to survive. You are important to me and need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We all a part of God's body. Stand with to us, our beloved pastor, Reverend John Henry is coming to welcome you. Give him a hand, please.
Praise ye the Lord. All right. Put your hands together and give the Lord a round of applause. It's certainly a wonderful joy and privilege to be in the house of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I take the opportunity on behalf of our bishop and every member of the leadership team here at the Eccles Assembly of God Church to say a special word of greeting to you and to welcome you in this service. Those of you who have joined us online, welcome. May God continue to move mightily in your hoax hold, in your circumstance, and may his blessings be your portion today. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a few announcements. Um, there will be a televised version of this service this evening, 8 p.m. on channel 6 to 5. For those of you who do not have access to the online uh, setting, well, you have your television tune in this evening, 8 p.m., channel 6 to 5. For those of you with the online setup, this Thursday will be here in your, one more time in your homes for our study of the Lord's, the Word of God. So please tune in, join and join again. Now, we know there are many persons viewing with us for the very first time and are present in-house with us for the very first time. And we'd like to take the opportunity to welcome all of you. Those of you who are with us for the very first time, those of you who are in-house for the very first time, a special word of welcome. For those who are in-house, we'd like to see who you are. So you're here with us for the very first time. Can Lee stand? Great. Come on. Good to have you. Put your hands together and give our first time visiting friends a round of applause. We love you. We appreciate you being with us. And may God continue to bless you in every possible way. And of course, we say here at Eccles, feel free to join us as often as you can as we meet here to lift up the name of Jesus. One more time, put your hands together and give our first time visitors a round of applause. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And of course, we have brethren in our midst who were not with us for a very long time. Let's say you were not with us for at least a year, but you're here today. We're not going to ask you to show yourself because sometimes some people can feel embarrassed. But we love you. We appreciate you taking time off to be with us today. And certainly I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Gopal sons. All right. Where are these guys? I know they're sitting somewhere. I, I saw some of them on the on the post with beard, but today I'm seeing beardless men. All right, we acknowledge you, we welcome you, and we continue to pray that God will continue to bless and keep you. Amen. Well, we're going to continue the service, and if you permit me, Brother Thompson, I will introduce our soloist, Deacon Gregory Citram, who will come forward to bless us with a wonderful song. God bless you, and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to spend time with you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise. In this heart of mine, God is good yeah. all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Sing with me. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good 
God is good all the time. If you're walking through the valley and there's shadows all around, do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you nor forsake you and his word is true God is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time Yes, we were sinners, so unworthy, still for us He chose to die. He filled us with His Holy Spirit, now we can stand and testify that His love is everlasting and His mercy, they will never end. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands And through the eyes of faith I can clearly see that God is good All the time He put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good All the time Through the darkest night His light will shine God is good He's so good God is good, yes, God is good, God is good, He's so good all the time. Hallelujah, God is good, praise God. Praise God. God is good. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. We were sinners, so unworthy. Still for us He chose to die He filled us with His Holy Spirit Now we can stand and testify That His love is everlasting And His mercy they will never end God is good all the time He put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time Through the darkest night His light will shine God is good, 
God is good. God is good. He's so good. God is good. He's so good all the time. Praise Hallelujah. God. He is good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. I don't know about you, but I really love the presence of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to welcome the man of God at this point in time, Reverend John Henry. Has he come to minister unto the Lord and minister the word of God? Give him a hand, please. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Praise God. Our bishop is around, but not around. <laughs> All right. Uh, this morning, uh, Land of Canaan is having a first run of their in-house service. Yeah, give the Lord glory. Give him praise. And uh, our bishop gladly took up the challenge, the opportunity to be with the land of Canaan brethren. So they are having a blast as they commence this uh, season of services in-house. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like us to go straight into the word of the Lord. And... Uh, the text that we'll deal with is one that was referred to by our bishop during his time of ministry on divine healing. And this text is taken from Exodus chapter 15, verse 23 to 26. Bless God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. The word of God directing our attention to Exodus 15 verse 23 to 26 says, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it, when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance. And there he proved them and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Father in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you. For this wonderful opportunity to discourse on your word. We invite our helper the precious Holy Spirit to enlighten us, give us clarity of thought and boldness of speech 
and even receptive hearts so that as we discourse on your word, revelation will come forth, transformation will take place, healings and deliverance will be our portion. We pray, O oh God, that you will take charge and allow your name to be glorified. And everybody say, Amen. It is common understanding among all that a saint or sinner saved or unsaved is that difficult times, challenges, obstacles in life will come our way. Now, some of them will leave us in a state of uh, despair, discouragement, and sometimes at our wit's end because it would seem as if they are above us and beyond us and we do not know what to do. That's life. Whether you live godly or not, trouble will come sometime or the other. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. The thing is, when we are faced with such situations, what to do is an important thought or idea or question. My belief is, when those moments come our way, those circumstances come our way, the only alternative we have is to call upon the Lord. Cry out on the Lord. Seek his face. And God, who is our creator, our maker, our redeemer, he will come true. He will do what only he can do for us. In those situations. In those matters. So. Do not give up. Jeremiah 9. 23, 24 says. Let not the wise man. Glory in his wisdom. Neither. Let the mighty man. Glory in his might. Let not the rich man. Glory in his riches. The point that Jeremiah. Wanted to bring out. That all of those things will fail us sometime or the other. And so we should not allow ourselves to be deceived by the thought that we can trust in our wisdom. That we can trust in our might. We can trust in our riches. And those things will come true for us in those seasons when difficult times come. In moments, many persons have discovered even all those wonderful things that are our resources do fail, but Jesus never fails. All of those wonderful resources we have at our disposal, they fail at times, but God, he never fails. And that's why we need to hold on to his unchanging hand. Don't give in. Don't give up. God will come true for you. Somebody needs to hear. Friends, do not give up because of the challenges that you are facing. Do not give up because of the discouraging period that you are going through. Do not give up because you are at your wit's end. Do not give up. Even because of the way you were treated by some people. Do not give up. God, who is your maker, will come true for you if you hold on to him and you stick to his promises that he has made to you. In this text that we read, Exodus, there are so many ideas that we can dwell on, that we can preach on, that we can study on, and they all will be in line with the word of God. But I'd like to just bring a few to you that will satisfy the idea that I am discussing. And the very first one, the very first point that I'd like to bring from this text is the one that says, 
that God, our creator, our maker, has placed within the environment, the natural environment, all that mankind will ever need for life, for happiness, for prosperity, for success. Every single thing has already been placed in the natural environment for mankind. As a matter of fact, if we go back to the record of Genesis, you will understand that as God created the heaven and the earth, he started to unfold his creation by putting so many things into place in order as a foundation, as an environment enabling for his prized creation that would have come later on. So when it was time for light to come forth, he said, let there be light and light was there. When it was time for the waters to be gathered together into one heap, he said, let the waters come together. When it was time for the dry land to appear, God said, let the dry land appear, and it was so. When it was time for vegetation to arise, he said, let the earth bring forth. Let the earth bring forth. Plants and animals came forth. And when he was finally satisfied that the environment was in order, then he said to himself and to the Holy Spirit and to the Son of God, let us now make man in our image, in our likeness. God ensured that the environment was right, rich, and ready before he brought man unseen. I'm saying again that whatever we need as human beings to live, to succeed, to prosper, they're already in the environment, already right there. So they were at a place called Mara, and the very name means bitter. It is possible that in that area, there was bitterness all the time. I'm not talking about just bitter water, but who knows that territory was noted for some amazingly bitter experiences. But I'm talking about the natural force. And we'll talk about the spiritual later on. In the natural, they had reached this place and it seemed as if somebody didn't know what they were doing. It sounds funny. How is it that Moses, we're coming out of bondage and now we're going to face with a place where there seems to be no water to drink. And the water that there was, it was bitter. Like somebody didn't know what was taking place here. You're leading us into what? This is not green pasture. This is a pasture full of bitterness. Sometimes, you know, God leads us in different places in life. But the point is, if he is leading us, you hold on to God. He knows what he is doing. He knows exactly the outcome of the matter or the situation even before we land into it. So don't lose focus. God knows what is going to take place. So the water is bitter. What shall we do? The people murmured. Everybody say murmured. Well, that's a nice word. But it doesn't bring good feelings with it. Because when murmuring takes place, instead of matters and issues getting better, they rather can go worse. We are already in a predicament here. The water is bitter and now murmuring is going to be added onto a negative situation. It means now after the physical is out of order, our social is, not going, is now going to be out of order. Our emotional is going to be out of order. Our spiritual might definitely be tackled because of one matter moving into the next realm, affecting the other realm. Well, thank God for a man such as Moses 
Now the word of God says, Moses cried unto the Lord. Now that word, if it really means that he sat down and cried, Oh God, what am I going to do now? Look what's taking place. The people here, they're thirsty. No water. And perhaps he's crying and he's choking up his hands. Now that would be a different picture of Moses. If that's the real meaning of the word cry. But I believe cry means he shouted out to God and said, God, come to my help. Come to our rescue. Come to me right now. I need you in this moment. I tell you, sometimes the cry of your heart might not be audible, but God hears it. There are many persons who are crying today, but you don't hear a sound. Hey, they look nice and they look fancy, but deep down in the side, uh, they are they're wailing, uh, uh, they're mourning, uh, they, 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 they're tears. Uh, uh, and it's only God knows it because he's seeing beyond the surface. Uh, he looks within the heart. He looks within the confines of your soul, uh, within the confines of your emotion. And he knows the intricacies there. He knows the sensitivity there. He knows what is taking place. And he's a God who responds to cries. He responds to cries. So if crying means I pray unto the Lord, continue praying because he's hearing you. If crying means you say, Lord, help me, continue doing that because God is going to come true. If crying means you just sit down and weep and you're hoping that God will come to your rest, so continue doing it. But just don't be a crier, baby, for the rest of your life <laughs> because that would be a nice state of being to be all the time. You must know that my cry is unto the Lord and God will come true for me. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attempt unto my prayer, the psalmist says. When my heart was overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Oh, the rock is Jesus. We ain't giving up. Because God can hear the cry of our hearts, uh, whether in the stillness of the night or whether we bawl in a uh, yes on the top of our voice. God hears our cry. He knows what we're going through. Moses cried. Talk about some cry babies in the Bible, but it will take a long time. But I heard. God attention was grasped or grabbed when Hagar was ousted and she left her baby at a some distance away. And she was saying to her, yes, I can't bear it to see my child die. But then the child began to cry. And I hear the Lord say, hey, Hagar, Hagar, I heard the crying of the baby. God responds. That is why we've coined a song which says, uh, tears are a language that God understands. Uh, if, it, if it's that state it is, God knows. But that's not the point of the issue. The issue is, Moses cried unto the Lord. God gave him a vision. God gave him a direction. God gave him an inspiration. God gave him a revelation. God gave him a direction. When you cry unto the Lord, something must happen between you and God. If it's just an empty cry, you better shut up. But if a cry of faith is being expressed to God, God will respond one way or the other. And here God responded to Moses and he said, Look yonder, there is a tree. In the environment. I put it there Moses. I knew. Well, God didn't tell him all of that. Right? I'm just, I'm just now verbalizing something. Here. Moses I knew these people were going to murmur. About this water bitter. And I already placed that tree there. Look to that tree. Go and get it. And throw it in the water. God made all preparation. For any bitter water that you and I might have to face with in life. God knows the way out. Seek him. Search him. Hold on to him. Cry out to him. He's going to give you the impetus to find it. There is always a solution when you cry unto God. Hebrews tells us, but without faith, 
It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When we cry unto God, it's not just empty cry, but it's a cry of faith. I, re I recall the situation with Peter when he stepped out to the boat and he began to walk. But when he took his eyes off the Lord and he began to focus on the winds and the waves and the storms, he began to sink. He cried out and he said, Lord, save me. It was a simple cry, but God responded in that moment, stretched forth his hand and pulled him up into a place of safety. If you know how to cry unto God, you're going to have the solution to your problem. If you know how to cry unto God, you're going to see a shift in the matter, in the issue. If you know how to cry unto God, uh, you will experience uh, a lift in, the, uh, in your spirit. Uh, you're going to see changes uh, because your cry is not idle or, or empty. It's full of faith uh, and God will respond. I asked the question... What do you do when you're faced with a crisis? Murmur or cry unto the Lord? I dare you, friends, don't bother with that murmuring thing. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's going to hurt some people. It's going to cause them to experience some anguish. It's going to put them into a setup that they perhaps can't get out. But if you begin to cry unto the Lord, he will come true not only for you, but for the persons involved in the situation. He will come true for you. He will come true for you. I'd like to bring to your attention that there is always purpose behind the process. There is always purpose behind the process. You know, when we look at a situation, we may feel that getting the tree and casting it into the water to make bitter water sweet was the end of it all. That was just a part of the process. The miracle of turning the bitter water sweet was part of a process. God had another agenda. God had an expected outcome. That he had intended to bring out of it all. What's that? I'm not trying to in any way put down the value of that tree in the water. That was an amazing thing. And that's why I like to say to those persons who are fighting the COVID-19 virus. You're looking high and low. But perhaps you're not looking in the right place because right with him, the environment, the cure might be right there. But you're not looking. You're not listening. You're not hearing the direction that God is giving you. We might say, preacher, don't go off track. No, he's not going off track. Right within the environment, there are things that are already in place for us too. Move on in life, so to speak. Now, on this note, COVID-19 might be new to us. We've never walked this way before. But what the scripture says, there is nothing new under the sun. <laughs> It might be new because in our generation, it's new, it's fresh, it has never come this way. We've never walked this way before. But you check the history from the mindset of God, you'll understand uh, everything that is fresh and new, it already happened before. And that which will happen, it is going to happen. There's nothing, nothing new under the sun. God has a plan. To deal with this. So there's purpose. What was the purpose. Of all that God. Was doing. In the lives of these people. What was the purpose. In my opinion. That is stated. In Exodus. 26.
from a natural perspective, you look at the scripture. If someone does you good, someone is kind to you, from a natural perspective, someone is always courteous, someone is always kind and compassionate to you, eventually, how do you begin to feel concerning that person? You feel grateful. You feel thankful. You feel as if you have a certain bond, a certain connection with that individual. And I believe it's the same principle God was applying to his people. God was out to do good to them. To show them his might and his power. And they saw a lot before. But God's intention was. In the end. That these people would have a stronger relationship with him. That they were not just going to focus on their healing. But they are going to take their minds off just the healing. And begin to go after the healer. That they were not going to focus just on the blessing. But they were going to lift their minds off the blessing and go after the blesser. That they're not going to think just about a deliverance. But they're going to go after the deliverer. God was using all of these manifestations in his might and his power. So that their hearts could have been drawn to him in a greater and a stronger way. So what the scripture tells us. Verse 26, Exodus 15. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. What God was doing, if you and I can come into a covenant and you can keep these statutes and you can walk according to my words and you can do, oh yes, uh, what I'm saying you should do and obey me in all these things. God is saying, if you can rise to that level, then hey, I'm going to be there for you in every possible area of your life. To the extent that God says, I am going to be your shield. I'm going to be your great and mighty reward. I'm going to be the individual to back you up, to protect you, to preserve you, to be there when you go forward, to be around you. God was saying in so many different ways. That I'll be there for you. In this particular excerpt. The Lord said. The Lord said. I will put none of these diseases. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. God was saying hey. You are only looking. And considering. This miracle of bitter water turning to sweet. You join me in covenant. And see what I will do for you. I'm going to keep you free. I'm going to keep you out of bondage. I'm going to keep you out of sickness. I'm going to keep you out of poverty. I'm going to keep you out of every snare. I'm going to be there for you. This was God's heartbeat in all that he was doing. This was God's heart. This was God's heart. You might say. Preacher. Are there examples of such. Arrangement. In the word of God. Yes there are. On a human plane. In the human level. I saw in Deuteronomy chapter. Number 15 and verse 16. A certain. Practice. You know, from time to time, the nation of Israel, men and women will fall short in whatever arrangements that they were involved in. And so they would have found themselves in bondage. Maybe for six years in bondage. I call it, we call it bondage, but in servitude. In servitude. But because the master was such a good master, because the master was such a merciful master, because the master was such a kind master, on the seventh year, when it was time for the servant to go free, as such, 
because he would have experienced such love and care and attention from his master he can choose to remain in that home here is what the lord word says and it shall be if he say unto thee i will not go away from thee because he loveth thee and thine house because he is well with thee then thou shalt take an all and trust it through his ear unto the door and he shall be thy servant forever why would the servant come to such a point and place in his life because during the time of his servitude he learned that his master was a good master a great master he didn't have any worry while he was in his master's house his master was good man when it's time for him to go free you know sometimes when we think about freedom he doesn't want to be free but guess what this servant realized he recognized that in my master's house i have more freedom than when i go by myself he experienced love he experienced kindness he experienced courtesy he experienced all manner of good things in his life when it was his time to go free he said mm -mm. master i have a good life with you here I, i don't want to leave you you're too good a person and so according to the practice they would take an all pierce his ear onto the door as a sign that here i'll be a servant forever what i'm trying to get at god's grace god's goodness god's favor god's mercy god's intervention god's miraculous transformation in our lives is wooing us encouraging us indicating to us that he's a good god what i should do now is be like the servant i don't want to be on my own anymore i rather be servant for life unto this my master my god my redeemer servant for life no wonder when the apostle paul began to write at sometimes he said prisoner for christ at other times some of these mighty men of god says slave for christ some of them servant forever because they came to that high uh, a place of recognition that here outside of god they are nothing they can't make it outside of god they cannot go forward in, in the way that they should but in god all things are possible and they can move mountains they can rise to the level that god would able to to, to take them so this practical way the servants would do it because of what they experience Are, are there other persons in the scripture? I noticed during our Bible study session, Brother Greg and team brought up Nebuchadnezzar, the three Hebrew boys. During the course of biblical history, men and women look beyond the, the, the normal and some of them rose to a high caliber in terms of the relationship with god and that's the only thing that was on their mind god they were not concerned about what they were eat and drink anymore it's just god and i believe that is where god wants all of us to come whereby we can so locked into him whereby he is totally and completely in charge of it all So the point was made during the Bible study session of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar had already made the statue, the image, 
The law was already passed. As soon as you hear the sound of music, worship, bow down. But the message was taken to the king. There are some people in your kingdom. They are not doing this thing. Who were they? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Something different about these guys. They had reached a plane in their relationship with God that they were not concerned anymore about anything else. God. Just God. Just God. Just God. I hear a brother talking about sold out. Sold out for God. Sold out for God. Sold out for God. My mind raised to the New Testament. And I re recall reading about some believers who were so sold out for God. That when the persecution arose, some of them were sawn asunder. Some of them were thrown to lions. Some of them were boiled in hot oil. Some of them were crucified. And all manner of atrocities, they went through. But there is one thing that came crystal clear about these group of men who had risen to that level of commitment to God. And the word says something like this. They love not their life unto death. Something like that. That is, they had reached a stage in their life, whether they're hungry or not, I don't care. Whether people molest them, I don't care. They were saying, hey, when I die today, I don't care. It's all for God. I believe this is where God is calling his church. Hear me now. The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world according to Jesus. The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world according to Jesus. And if we are not going to raise the level of our commitment to that in which we say, God, it's you and only you, some of us will not make it. It is time that we see the big picture and head to that point where God wants us to go. So when the fire was heated, the guy said, King, we don't really have to discuss this matter with you. We know the ability of God. They were saying, we know the willingness of God. But King, even if our God doesn't deliver us, King, we ain't bowing. We not giving up our God. I heard the testimony about a man who served the Lord. And he was given the opportunity to recant. And he said words to this effect. I may have some numbers wrong. But 98 years I have served him. He did me no wrong. How can I turn my back on him now? He's a well-known Christian pillar the faith by the name of Polycarp. I believe that all that God is doing, all the intervention he is intervening in our lives is so that we can see the end. That God wants us to rise in our commitment to him. Whereby we can see it's you. And you only God. I'm not going to give up my commitment to God. Because of this issue. Or that issue. Or this situation. Or that situation. Because some situations are so sensitive. I cannot mention them here. But you're not going to give up. Your commitment. Your relationship with God. Because of anything. God I'd rather have you. And lose every single thing. And that's where I call the church to today. That's where I call. I'm not belittling turning. Bitter water sweet. Or getting healing. Or getting deliverance. Or finding a miraculous move of God. I'm not belittling that. But all of those things should bring us to a place. 
Everybody say, God, I sold out to you from now on, Lord. I yield to you completely, irrespective of what takes place. And who knows? Before the service is true, God can heal somebody. God can deliver somebody. God can bless somebody. God can open your understanding to some mystery that you need to, to have that understanding open. But when all is said and done, God will do all of that so that you can be lifted to a higher level of relationship with him. Let's look to him in prayer. We're going to have... Hallelujah. Praise God. Can somebody sing a chorus? After which we we'll pray. Hallelujah. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Perhaps you can stand up. Stand on to if you my prayer. Like From the ends of the earth will I. and online you've got a need you have a problem a situation and you're desperately seeking God's help believe the Lord right now perhaps you're not a believer but you have listened to this program you have viewed it I'm reminding of the scripture that says that the goodness of God leaded men to repentance as you experience the touch of God, as you experience the intervention of God, you will know for your own very self that God loves you, He cares for you, and He wants to bless you. Let's worship Him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we lift every need represented, both in-house and online, O oh God. We release your presence, the healing presence of God. 
We release your anointing, the anointing that destroys the yoke. We release your touch and we pray that everywhere as men and women exercise their faith in you, they will receive from your hand. They will receive from your hand and you will bless them today. Bless them today in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift these homes before you. We lift these lives before you. We release your touch in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We give you the glory. To our online friends, we thank you for having joined us. And we say, see you next week as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus. For those in line or in house, continue to lift your hands and let's pray. Let's worship the Lord. I believe the Lord wants to 